Hello everyone and welcome to this very special Kingsfield conversation with Kesedif. Kesedif Theomini, how do you how do you want to how do you want it? I actually normally go th- the I actually normally use Theomini, but Kesedif is just fine. It's actually a long story that um I won't go into here. It's kind of become a running joke, so Theomini is normal, <laughs> but Kesedif is fine. All right, so just for the record, Kesedif is the YouTube channel. And this episode is going on YouTube, and you want me to refer to you as the Harmony. Our case enough is just fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so I've been uh, I've been wanting to do an episode like this for a little while now because I did a bunch of videos on the Kingsfield games, uh, one through four, and what I found was uh the narrative, the story, the lore, it felt like it was constantly being rewritten as the games progressed. Uh, and I, I assumed some of that had to do just with translation, and some of it might have been the developers decided to take the franchise in a different direction. And I I wasn't, wasn't able... I wanted to do just like, this is a comprehensive story breakdown of Kingsfield, but I wasn't able to do it because I couldn't find any, like, a manual that just went explicitly into the events of every game and how it connects to every other game. But then, I got to know you, and I, I learned that you, you're kind of like a manual for that stuff. Um, sort of, <laughs> kind of, I guess. It's, it's kind of, I kind of fell into it. Um, like how's it? Years, years and years ago, I was doing some, like, Bloodborne stuff. I had actually gotten into the whole, like, lore examination tube of of souls via Aegon yeah. actually and like I I was like this stuff couldn't have just jumped out of Miyazaki's head fully formed like Pallas Athena jumped off of Zeus's head so I decided to go back into From Software's back catalog which is where I've been kind of muddling around for the last bunch mm. of years um so I've learned a whole lot about how From Software puts together a game, and apparently, and discovered they have this like design style that like no one else really adheres to anywhere else. Like Capcom doesn't have like a design style to this extent. Mm, no, and it's yeah, yeah. So I've just kind of been examining old From Software games and striking where the iron is ice cold. <laughs> yeah, it it is a really interesting style because they 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 seem like such an insulated company that just accidentally became super big when Miyazaki I think Miyazaki's contribution to the From Software formula was he brought his love of uh Team Eco into it. Yeah. So like I think so. Demon Souls is just it's just Kingsfield 4 but it plays a bit more like Eco. And it's like, "Oh, oh yeah." Yeah, Demon Souls. I think I have this mental spectrum for how the modern From Software games go, and Demon mm-hmm. Souls actually leans closest to a game like Shadow Tower Abyss, which I know you've just covered, uh, oh, yeah. than Kingsfield. But the one game that leans closest to Kingsfield is Dark Souls Two. Yes. So, in my mind, that explains a lot of the initial reactions to some of these games. <laughs> yeah so um um first i think we should just go over the story briefly or maybe in depth it depends on just how it goes so uh right in kingsfield one we're specifically talking about the japanese one that didn't release in the west if yes, you want and to be clear you... when i when i mention the numbers i use the speedrun nomenclature and that's a 1j 2j 3j uh when mm. i refer to all, all three of them. Do you want to know a cool little trick you can do? And this is, this goes out to everybody listening to this as well. If you want a lot of comments and a lot of engagement to feed the YouTube algorithm, mention that this is Kingsfield 1 and it didn't release in the West, but don't elaborate. And then a <laughs> lot of people a lot of people will go, oh, but I actually did play it. What, what, what do you mean? And then, <laughs> hey... I I assume it's the same with Final Fantasy, because we didn't get a lot of those. But I think that's better known. 
Yeah, that's probably better known that they got misnumbered. Yeah. Um, a lot of kings from software and age tech slash ASCII at the time were very young companies, full with very young people, and <laughs> they were doing the best that they could. <laughs> and people forget that the PlayStation released a full year before it released in the West in Japan. So, yeah. like, Japan had the PlayStation a full year before the rest of the world did. So, people forget oh, yeah. that. Yeah, and the first Kingsfield was, like, the 13th or 16th game or something? Yeah, it was very, very, very close to launch. Yeah. And, and it was part of, like, to understand the whole craziness that led to, like, Kingsfield being released, you kind of have to a be kind of versed in the craziness of the console wars back in the nineties and how Sony decided to take things personally when Nintendo backed out of their deal with Sony and how mm -hmm. Sony was basically desperate for third parties to the, to the point where they created an SDK that was very user friendly and um, easy to create games on as well as the wizardry license, which ASCII, which is still around and still under Katakawa with From Software, wizardry was super popular in Japan. And yes. I don't know how much you know about wizardry, but wizardry is circa 1981. And ASCII even made it, produced an anime. And there's like 50 games only in Japan that are, quote, wizardry likes. And Kingsfield was probably initially conceived as another wizardry like for the yeah. PlayStation. I know FromSoft they went out of office software development into game development specifically because of Wizardry 2. Or no, yeah. for Wizardry on the Apple 2. Yeah. Like Wizardry is incredibly important for the Japanese gaming industry. A lot like how Ultima is for the Western industry. Because a lot of things in the Western, like the Western sphere, can trace its lineage back to Ultima. But actually, in Japan, you can trace its game, its like lineage back to a little Canadian game called Wizardry. Yeah. And so all of this coalesces, and now Toshizen brings them from office software feeding pigs in the Anaka <laughs> to making video games. And apparently, according to some of the stuff that I've heard from the Kingsfield speedrun community, uh, who've talked to, accidentally talked to, Hasegawa Ichi, who was a programmer on the Kingsfield games, they were like, well, we were really young. And we were kind of mm. learning off the seat of our pants. And uh, <laughs> every apparently everybody back then was just very, very young. And like it's mind boggling today because you've got millions and millions and millions of dollars and you'd never have groups and teams that young again, just like deciding, hey, let's change the names of these NPCs to people we know because it'd be cool. Age tech. <laughs> you'd never have that now. Ever. Never, nah, ever, nah. ever. Nah. You will have people telling you that uh, time is convoluted when it is actually stagnant, which, you know. It has some major ramifications for understanding what Dark Souls is about, but that's a different story. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting um, that because it's also because I, I think it's a case of there just there was no grown up who like understood how to work with computers back then. Yeah, I mean there was it's no grown ups much... in the video game industry at all. Yeah, it's the same then. with like the history of Team Silent, where like Takayoshi Sato he just. He was the only one who knew how to do 3D animation, and he uh, he threatened Konami, like, hey, I, I want to be on this project. And they were like, er, okay, but we'll put a supervisor over you, and he'll be the lead 3D designer. And he was like, nah, I won't do that. And if I don't, if, if you don't give me the credit, I will, ref I will not teach anybody in the studio or in Konami how to do 3D animation. And they were like, Fine, but you'll have to do all of the 3D animation for Silent Hill. Which resulted in him, like, he lived in the studio for, like, a year. Just, 
using the uh, the office computers to render 3D animatics. Yeah, and like, you couldn't get a home PC to do that stuff back then. You had to be in the office to do that stuff. Like, <laughs> a lot of a lot of what Hasegawa-san said is like, well, we kind of just kind of learned from the seat of our pants. We kind of just kind of accidentaled into what we've learned at the beginning of From Software's ex- existence, which is nuts, but understandable. Yeah. Nobody knew what they you were know, doing back uh, then. Did a uh, Natoshi Jin or Zin, does he have like a grounding in literature or does he just come at this from, I'm the CEO of a little company and I'm just going to make a game? I don't know a whole lot about Zin, Zinzan. Um, other, other than like a lot of the people from old From Software loved him mm-hmm. and apparently Miyazaki even loved him too. Cause he'll, he'll like speak endearingly about Zin. <laughs> um, even, even vaguely and, um, even today and But Zin Zin seems to be just kind of the overarching driving force of early from software, and then his number two was Nabishima for a lot of games because their names come up a heck of a lot in from software credits as yeah. either like usually Zin is supervisor, which is usually credited above director, and Nabishima is usually a producer until Nabishima left. Uh, from software. Yeah. Where did he go? Nabashima left to create his own studio. Yeah. He directed the game Left Alive, which came out a few years ago to uh, Infamy. Okay. It was not a good game. Oh. It was, It was panned hard in the gaming press. Even, especially since it was kind of connected to uh, EDF, and uh, I know I remember Jim Stephanie Sterling had a whole video about it, and uh, did not like that game at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, the story of Kingsfield One, as I came to understand it, um, it. To me, it seemed like there were two openings. One where uh, the main protagonist, who is either called... Okay, let me just zoom back a bit. The main protagonist, I believe, has three names, depending on which publication you're reading. His name is either John Alfred Forrester, Jean Alfred Forrester, or Alfred Forrester. Which is it? Um, Probably Jean Alfred Forrester. Yes! Yeah, it's probably Gene yes. Alfred. Um, even that's the even that's the Japanese the name males will like drop his first name, especially with three J. They'll be like, "This is yeah. Alfred." <laughs> um, although they use Aleph for Alexander. And uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I guessed his name was Gene, and I decided that's the name I'll use in the rest of the videos. So I'm very happy yeah. to be vindicated there. Um, the story seems to begin where he wakes up from like a bad dream or something and there's a big there's a big light in a forest and he runs to it and he hears that he's a chosen hero of destiny. And then there's another start to the game where I, I from memory the same thing happens except he he instead of finding a ray of light he goes into the dungeon. Can you um can you tell me how how does the story actually begin? The story begins with John Alfred's dad disappearing into the catacombs of Verdite. Um, yeah. He, John Alfred, was hanging out with his best friend, Alexander. I'll just use Alexander instead of just Elf. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, they were royal families at the time. Um, Alexander was a prince of Granitiki, which is a neighboring, a neighboring kingdom. And they were training together to become knights. And 
Jean Alfred had a very simple desire, and that was to become an awesome sword. Sword knight, you know, like his dad. And his dad disappears into the catacombs at one point, so he goes in right after him. (laughs) And, um, probably knowing exactly where his father ended up. Probably because of the, the, the dream or whatever, but he goes into the catacombs intending to find his dead. Now, at the background, you have um, the kings of the time who... Now, to back up a little bit, yeah, <laughs> only royalty had the ability to use magic. This is what made them royals in the kingdom of Verdun. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what marked them as part of the royal family. And... Jean Alfred Forster is related via his mom, I believe. And he yes. probably he would probably have a claim to the throne, but he from, doesn't. All he really from, wants to do is be a knight. From memory, his mother his from his mother's blood, he like she comes from some dark bloodline, but she is a good woman from memory. Well, the royal family are dark and we're getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. For getting to that. They're they're full of people who are backstabbing each other for the throne, and there's a lot of dead kingly bodies you will come across in one J because they keep killing each other because they want power. Ambition, power. We know those those themes well in From Software Lore. And Reinhardt, I believe it's Reinhardt. Reinhardt yes. decides to grab his entire army, and head into the catacombs. Jean Alfred has no idea why, and it turns out that we're, that the people at the top floors, or the floors closest to the surface, only know that Reinhardt wants a magic crystal. They don't know the nature of this crystal. They just know that he wants a crystal. So they're like mining the place for it. Really, this crystal is the Moonlight Sword, but no one really knows that until they get closer to Gyra, which is into the Earth. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. (laughs) Like, he's looking for the sword, of course. Yeah, so, Uh right, Reinhardt wants the sword. So Reinhardt has, like, murdered the king before him, the king behind him, the king. And we'll come across those kings on on later floors. And that's why one of those kings gives us some fire magic, because he was well-versed in it. And really why this whole adventure awakens the magical nature of Jean Alfred, because he is able to also being sort of related to to the royal family. Yeah. Now, um, in uh, in Kingsfield 1, it seemed to me, when I finished the game, that it was a very sort of traditional, straightforward fantasy story, where, in the end, you get the Sword of Light, and you defeat the evil uh, king, and you become the new king, and it's just like... And they all lived happily forever after. But then... Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, Kingsfield 2 happens... Um, and I think we should maybe talk a bit about the trilogy before getting into like the mythos behind these games. Um, right. In Kingsville 2, it seems like the the sort of simplistic fantasy story of the first game, they they add a bit of depth to it, and they explain that the dragon who gave you that sword, it didn't give you that sword because it's a noble dragon of destiny, Lady of the Lake style. It did that because it's looking for a champion. Right, right. Yes. Um, and you're you're yep. you're right in that it does seem like they start adding on and adding on, and it seems that once they finished one J and they put that out the door, they decided to create a sequel, pretty much probably immediately. And yeah. given how the turnaround of games were back then, they probably were on top of this very, very fast. But, they probably were drafting a sequel while they were finishing the first one. Right, exactly. And so you're correct in saying they took the idea of this this dragon, this other dragon, and they decided to expand upon it. 
Mm. <clears throat> so, Gyra in game number two, uh, it sends, I believe, Nacron to steal the Moonlight Sword. Am I right there? Fun fact: the name okay. Necron. <laughs> the name <laughs> Necron is a username of Mark Johnson think AOL username of Mark Johnson, and they thought it would be cool to rename the, quote, Church King to Necron. <laughs> so this is where the name Necron comes from. Mark Johnson was the age tech executive producer um, pretty much t- from the beginning of age tech to the end of age tech, and he's probably still around today. But uh, Necron was his, like, AOL username that they decided to put on this guy because it sounded cool. <laughs> they were very young back then. Yeah. Um, well, we've been... My server has been slowly retranslating Kingsfield 2J and the the actual name for Necron is the Church King. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's your there's your fun fact for the day. I it it does. There's a lot of editorialization that happens with Kingsfield, two J and three J. Like people complain about the translation of Dark Souls, but the translation of Dark Souls was at least overseen by From Software. Apparently, yeah, according like... to Age Tech, well, one of the guys at Age Tech that was found for an interview for actually. Armored Core 2, a lot of the times they would, they were like an office of 10 people. They would send an email to From Software. They'd have to translate it, use their, because they had native speaker translators at HTAC. They had like two. They'd have to use one of their translators' time to translate an email, send it to From Software, and then wait 12 hours for it to be returned. <laughs> that email would come in, in Japanese. They'd have to translate the e- <laughs> translate the email and then put it on to whoever it needed to be at the time. I doubt H Tech knew that there was even a sequel coming. And I <laughs> doubt they knew that there was a third coming. Um, and it's very obvious why they skipped 1J. And that's because by the time the PlayStation released, 2J had released. And so they started with the newest one not really understanding or knowing that you probably needed 1J to understand 2J. Mm. So there's a heck of a lot of editorialization going on with um, a good chunk of 2J. So I'll try to point out some of the differences. All right. Um, I just, I like, I like that. It's (laughs) like, again, going to what we were talking about, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that today. You wouldn't name like a major character after like the executive producer's AOL username. <laughs> First of all, we wouldn't be using AOL anymore. We'd be using Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it would be like I'm making I'm translating a game. I go, "Hmm, Theomini 0432. I don't know what the number is for you, but uh this is maybe a bit of a a side but a side note here. Uh, do you want me to include a link to your Discord server in the video? Uh, yeah, it's it's pinned to my Twitter. So if you want to grab a permanent link, it's right up there. All right, my Twitter. Uh, so you hear it here, people. You're welcome to join her Discord server. You're also welcome to join mine. Link should be in the description below. But yeah, Gyra is looking for a champion because it turns out Gyra maybe not the best dragon in the world. But it has it has an opponent dragon called Seath, and it bo- it boggles my mind why Seath gives you the Moonlight Sword in Dark Souls, but Seath gives you the Dark Slayer in Kingsfield. Right. Well, what is up? To be fair, Dar- Seath doesn't give you the Moonlight Sword in Dark Souls. You kind of have to cut his tail off for it. <laughs> I mean, well... he's not going to be like, "Hey, here, here you go. Here's a Moonlight Sword." No, you cut his tail off. And he's like, how rude. And he tries to <laughs> breathe on you with his curse breath. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah, but um, so Gyra is the dark dragon of light. And Seath is the light, uh, white dragon of darkness. Um, yes. 
and they give you the swords they give you the moonlight sword and the dark slayer are particularly good at destroying the other my understanding right. when i was coming into this is that this is sort of a divine game of thrones where they're both trying to organize humanity to destroy the other so that they can take over the whole thing correct all right it, and it is in it is very much described in 3j a lot more like the dragon glasses and the high elves are yeah. really the only ones who are able like to to tell you in 2J and in 3J what the heck is going on and those are um, optional areas in King's yeah. 3 mind you yeah you can easily miss them you have to search them out you have to you have to go find them you have to go look for them and like in 2J you can't like miss it really because the the high elves are like he murdered us. Most of us became quote grudges, according to our our new translation. And yeah. a lot of the high elves in the in the island of Melanot became these grudge holding ghosts that are your enemies. They're like the big head things floating around. Those are all high oh. elves. And. It does seem, and we were talking about this the other day in my server, about how Seath cultivated a very loud cult of High Elves. Mm -hmm. And he he fooled the High Elves into basically worshipping him. And they lived on Melanot <clears throat> before Gyra showed up. Gyra... His, his, quote, cult of personality was in 1J, the Dragon Fairies. Now, both, both cults end up getting murdered because it turns out the dragons don't give a crap about those loyal to them yeah. unless they can serve. But Gyra also creates a cult within Melanot led by, quote, the Church King or slash necron necron and um that's why you have all of these soldiers around who are kind of dressed kind of weirdly they're part of this cult and mm -hmm. they're kidnapping and basically enslaving a bunch of people on the island to go mine for magic crystals, crystals. yeah yeah but gyra really just wants to murder Seath any way necessary. And those loyal to them don't matter to the, the dragons at all. And both dragons have basically murdered and massacred those loyal to them on both sides. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> like I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, I think, because... Gyra, you do find what Gyra does to the dragon fairies towards the end of 2J. And they were very, like, Muria was very loyal to Gyra. But that didn't matter in the end. Nah. Because nothing matters I, to Gyra or Seath than the destruction of the other. I like in Kingsfield 2, there's, I think there's two rooms where you can see this. Um, it's it looks as if the the dragon fairies are in like giant test tubes. Yes, I'll I'll probably include a visual of that. I I I love that I love that visual because I think it really embodies the thematic difference between what I interpreted from the first game to the second, where like this it it was so simplistic in the first game that you just meet the fairy and it gives you the it, it releases the moonlight sword in the second game now you see fairies in test tubes what like it, it's such a it's such a juxtaposition i feel um in kingsville 2 uh we finally face, face gyra uh, and can you explain to me why it takes place in tron um, it seems like we're in system shock virtual reality there's a couple of things that we're discovering as we kind of retranslate some of these dialogues. And one of the things that pops up a lot of the times is they are that from software uses the term Nemuri 
in, in to refer to Gyra, aka the sleeper. They don't call him the dreamer. They don't call him anything other than that, but the sleeper. Hmm. So we're not completely sure exactly where they're they're going here. But there's a couple of things that that have popped up with regards to Gyra. A, he is the sleeper. You have to wake up the sleeper Gyra. And two, that they use the word shinen or thoughts in response to the power of Gyra. You have to kill the thoughts of Gyra. We're not super sure about what they're going there going there with. But um there's a lot of there's been a lot of speculation about whether Gyra has tele- telepathic abilities, mind control abilities, um, the fact that he, they title him a little bit as as the sleeper is also really interesting. Mm-hmm. And so, at the end of the game, you go into a place that looks like Tron that I call the abyss because there's always the abyss. Yeah, <laughs> it's just True. it just looks like that because of like probably game restrictions, graphical restrictions, um, and that they wanted to show you where the floor actually is and be very sure, very clear about where the floor is in that place. Because you're actually not, in your imagination, you're not supposed to, be, there is no floor. <laughs> you're just kind of floating there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also think, aren't there sections in that final boss arena where you can fall off? Yes, you can fall. There are holes. Yeah. 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 And... Basically, what I'm I'm thinking is that when you go into quote the mindscape of Gyra, sort of like a one of my old theories about the um, everlasting dragon in Dark Souls One, mm-hmm. and that you have to go into their mindscape to defeat them at least temporarily, and so you go into Gyra's mind palace to stick him with the pointy end and to steal the Moonlight Sword. Now, part of the whole thing with 2J is that the Church King or Necron was sent to steal the Moonlight Sword to engender John Alfred to come back to Melanon and to engender yes. John Alfred to freaking kill Seath already because John Alfred was deemed the champion of Gyra, which is why the MLS was even unlocked to begin with in 1J. But John Alfred decided to go back to Verdite and become king instead of go killing Seath. So they engendered D.S. Bagel to become the church king and to steal the Moonlight Sword and to force John Alfred to come back. Except, whoops, it wasn't John Alfred who went back because John Alfred is too busy being kin. But his best friend, Aleph or Alexander, who went to Melanot for him. So 2J is a lot of mistaken identity. (laughs) <laughs> in a lot of ways too i feel like gyra like if gyra if we assume gyra has telepathic powers that would explain um the dream that jean alfred forrester had i yes. assume gyra could have just given him give him in another dream that's like hey come to melanat and kill the evil dragon you dickhead do it already do the thing already <laughs> jesus christ why did i give you the mls <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he didn't, so... Um, I yeah, think well, part of it was D.S. Bagel. Like, you have to, like, go backwards and figure out D.S. Bagel, and D.S. Bagel really just wanted a fight. So I think Gyra, in a way, wanted to make sure that they chose the right chosen one and to pit him against the chosen one in the wings, which is D.S. Bagel slash Necron slash the Church King. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so at the end of Kingsville 2, we slay Gyra, and it's kind of funny then that Gyra orchestrated all of this to destroy Seath, and in the end, it's just, no, Gyra is destroyed. Kind of. Because kind of. Gyra does come back. Um, it's I think it's, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit later, but I think Gyra, it's kind of like Sauron, where even though it's destroyed, there's sort of a lingering presence that remains in the world. Um, yes, and and this kind of makes sense if we 
go with the idea that they're using, quote, the word belief or shinin as a stand-in for telepathic abilities or <clears throat> mind abilities of mm-hmm. Gyra because his he's kind of regenerating, as we'll find out, at yeah. the bottom of the catacombs. But like you didn't you didn't defeat his mind, you just kinda of defeated the body and took the MLS. Yeah. yeah. So um Alexander comes back, he gives Gene the uh he gives him both swords. And mm-hmm. Prosperity is supposed to take the land. But then, because Gyra no longer exists, Seath goes on a post and Seath um, Seath hijacks the mind of Gene Alfred Forrester, uh, has him destroy the Moonlight Sword from memory, so um, that not quite because I don't know if you've played Pilot Style, but Pilot Style is I, a prologue. I, I did okay, and like because Pilot Style is the prologue, and okay. it's it's in English his name is David Silviera, named after another producer at Age Tech. Who has You're done... telling me David Silviera isn't the name of a character yeah. in a real fantasy yeah. game? <laughs> David Silviera is a real guy. He's done a couple of like interviews with the speedrunners because the speedrunners have have like found them on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. But uh, that character, the commander, took the MLS and went to hide it, essentially. And uh, you as Ale- you play because you play Alexander in pilot style, and Alexander yeah. goes to rescue the MLS, and then the prologue happens, which is completely rewritten in the Age Tech one. So I would suggest taking that whole like translated prologue and throwing it in the trash. <laughs> it's, it's actually heart garbage. Heart garbage. Um, most of Age Tech's editorialization, which is really funny happens at the beginning and the end of the games. The end of 2J Mm -hmm. suggests that HTEC had no idea a third third game was coming out, first of all. So they rewrite the ending of 2J to be like, Alexander is the chosen one with the chosen man and the chosen sword. Hey, look at Alexander. He's coming back triumphant. No, that is not (laughs) what the ending says. The ending in Japanese basically amounts to... Alexander is pissed off at what he has seen on Melanot. He has he has become extremely angry at the fact that humanity has been, basically been duped by these dragons for millennia. Yeah. He is extremely angry that the the loyalty shown to both Seath and Gyra has amounted to their destruction. And they weren't even given respite in the end. And Alexander sa- Alexander basically says, the Moonlight Sword and the Dark Slayer are not magical because of the dragons. They are magical because humanity believes in them. This becomes important for, for 3J. And that's where it actually ends. It ends with Alexander being pissed off, returning the two swords to Verdite. It is It does not close with Alexander is the chosen man with the chosen sword. Look at how awesome the player is. You're cool. No, that is not how 2J ends. So when 3J begins, well, actually when pilot style begins, which is extremely rare, but you can find it on turnip trucks everywhere. um, (laughs) Silviera hides the MLS from a rampaging Jean Alfred. Jean Alfred has gone, has flipped out. He got sick at one point for like a week, a little bit after his wife died. Yeah. And Sylvia is it alluded ha- to? Is it alluded to that the sickness was him battling Seath's influence? Yes. Yes. And All he right. loses. Oh boy. So, Sylvia hides the MLS. In pilot style, you're playing Alexander. And you find the MLS hidden in, like, amongst lava with 
crazy jumps you have to go through to find it. Mm. And Alexander uses the MLS to put up a wall of colorless deep fog. Stop me <laughs> if you've heard this one before. It's a like a wall of colorless deep fog, si- like sealing verdite, so that the demons that Jean Alfred has released can't escape and nothing can really come in. Now, a lot of this is, is lessened in the translation, but imagine what Alexander is going through. That choice he makes basically signs the death warrant of whoever is surviving in Verdite. Yeah. He's signing a death warrant. Because of the events on Melanot, Alex- like Alexander is able to use like awaken his own magical powers because he is also royalty but from a different place granatiki he uses the mls to seal verdite and that's when the mls breaks and oh. cuz like See, the mls thought... breaks because he gives he gives the like powers to the four like water earth fire wind to the archmages yeah or the lord souls and I thought Jean had bro- had broken it to no. make sure it couldn't be used against him. No. That's interesting. He, the, Silviera steals it so that, like, he can't take it. Yeah. Silviera steals hmm. it in pilot style so that he can't take it. And in pilot style, you, you find it. And then Alexander uses the sword to give elemental abilities to four lords. And then keeps the light ability for himself to steal in Verdite. This is in the prologue, but this, I think, is completely rewritten by H. Day. <laughs> um, so he sends the four lords out, he seals in Verdite, and basically signs a death warrant. Because mm. nothing can leave Verdite, not even the people who are still alive. So there's a lot of people who are, like, huddled in their homes for the last, like, 10 15 years the survivors and like they're extremely they're like huddled in these small little enclaves trying to figure out what to do now in 3j Mm. and a lot of that is lessened in translation also because it's absolutely horrible and i'm pretty sure age tech was looking for a t rating and back then the srb were right bastards So, there's, there's darn rating boards. The ESRB, like the ESRB, only came about in like because of Mortal Kombat and the Sega CD. Some Sega CD games, politicians in America got real bad, big mad at it, and decided to make a the ESRB. Um, and Typical. They they might be a whole lot of nothing now, but back then they weren't like super not nothing. But. <laughs> There is a lot that has been. It's like the been... Comics Code Authority. It's just yeah. a bunch of, it's just a bunch of angry, pissed off lawyers who try to ruin everyone's fun. Pretty much, but like, there's a, there's a lot of horror going on in Three J that I don't think the translation really gets to, either on purpose or because of something else that I don't mm. that I'm not privy to. But, um, the, especially towards the end of the game, where I think the editorial, the editorialization got lax and the translation is a bit more faithful, that, like, the decision Alexander had to do really probably weighed upon everyone there, because everyone there pretty much assumed that they were going to die violently somehow mm. by the demons just kind of wandering around outside. So that's that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh and in the third game we play uh John's son, whose name I can't remember. Lyle. Lyle Forrester. That's right. And we are are we raised by David Silviera? No, we're we're raised by Leon Shore. That's right. Yeah. And he gives us the X Selector. What is the magical backstory behind that sword? So, magical backstory is Leon Shore is met in 2J, actually, 
And 2J oh. is the man. Leon is a young high elf who is li- leaving, living at some like random area with his ghostly grandmother. Um, we assume she's a ghost because either it's a graphical glitch that after you speak to her... Oh, that's right. She disappears. She disappears. So, like, after you speak to her, she disappears, but her, her rocking chair keeps rocking. So we're not sure if that's, like, intentional or not. But Leon Shore is a high elf magical sword craftsman. Mm-hmm. And... Bringing, like, the... Leon Shore helps us unlock Dark Slayer, and he recrafts Dark Slayer from the Black Crystal. Mm-hmm. And um, it's I think implied that the MLS is kind of his his thing, but we're not quite sure. In any case, he recrafts the Dark Slayer, and he accompanies Alexander back to the country of Verdite from Melanot. Um, one of the things where we didn't mention about Melanot is that when you drink the healing waters of Seath mm-hmm. on Melanot, you can't leave Melanot. It's an Avalon kind of purgatory kind of thing. You become mm-hmm. either you're either addicted to the healing waters or there's something about the healing waters that forces you to stay on the island of Melanot. Yes. So the people there are imprisoned, who are brought there, fed some water, and imprisoned, and told to go mine. Um, But Leon Shore is also kind of stuck there. And the fact that Leon and Alexander are able to even get off of the island island of Melanot is probably something anyway. Um, But Leon raises Lyle and decides... realizes that there needs to be a sword of humanity unmoored from either dragon. So yes. enter the Exelector. Right. It's it's a crystal sword that grows in power with you. Yes. Not and... with use. Yeah. If you another tip for anybody looking to get a lot of comments, make make that mistake. <laughs> I, I thought it was a like a weapon in Ratchet and Clank, where it just it had its own experience bar, but apparently no. No, it just it grows with you, not with use. Um, and it is the crystal sword of humanity, basically. Mm-hmm. So Leon Shore gives you this sword with the intention that uh, this sword will be the one to steal both the dragon swords. In the end. Yes. And the story of Kingsville 3, it's you go around, you find the elemental mages, and you learn the magics from them until you're ready to confront uh, Gene Alfred Forrester in his castle. Very Dark Souls um, too. But you also, there's also, t- talking about Gyra from earlier, in the catacombs from the first game, it's something I love. I love when like a game has an area from an older game in it, like um, the ending to System Shock 2. Um, in, in the bottom, we find Gyra's sort of lingering form, and we can have a, him reforge the Moonlight Sword. And Correct. if we defeat Jean at the end of the game, he will, and we have the Moonlight Sword, he will sort of snap out of Seath's magical grip, and he will merge the Moonlight Sword with the x Elector for us so that we can fight Seath. Yeah, he, Is, he blesses the MLS and it becomes the Ultra MLS <laughs> so that you can go defeat Seath. Is the implication there then that, what, humanity has overcome the powers of Gyra or what? I would say that there's a lot to say about that. Like, um... That humanity has overcome the need for either dragon, mm-hmm. which is probably the goal. Um, if you're if you do the go- the good ending, which is that ending, humanity has overcome its need for any of the dragons, 
The dragons have basically toyed with humanity and used humanity as a tool for so long, thinking mm-hmm. that in their, their magical war, that doesn't really mean very much to humanity, but has threatened humanity vis-a-vis collateral damage. Yes. So, definitely overcoming the need for either of the dragons, and also that it feels like Jean Alfred uses puts his soul into the sword itself. Um, wh- like one theme I I was working on, and I wrote a, a long essay piece about it, was about fathers in from software games, and yeah, fa- like we start a from the first from software game with a man looking for his father who through hook or by crook or choice of their own evidently chose duty over his son and his son had to go clean up his mess this is echoed yeah. in 3J where the power of the throne if you wanted to like take out all of the supernatural elements of it the power of the throne basically consumed John Alfred Forrester and separated him from his son. Yeah. And Lyle, like his father before him, had to go basically clean up his father's mess. And, you know, that's a thing that comes up in a lot of From Software games. Afterwards, the the role of fathers. Mothers, not as much. Mothers are usually, like, deified and distant to the point where they're, they might as well not exist, other than mm-hmm. passing. But it's there's a lot to say about from software and uh father son issues and this this is the biggest example of that or one of the biggest examples of that yes <clears throat> i am um, so after we get the the super duper moonlight sword which looks it's super anime which is weird because like most of the swords they look fairly normal like most of the weapons they look fairly real then like the final weapon you get it looks like it's from uh, the ending of some crazy jrpg yeah because the guard is like huge and like spiky and stuff yeah. right yeah yeah it's like you would probably just hurt yourself trying to wield this thing <laughs> listen it's magic you don't hurt yourself because of magic <laughs> that's true that's true I mean, that and said, can... that said, the, the original MLS is available in Dark Souls 3, and with the cheekiest, stupid item description I've ever read, ever, <laughs> from software knew what they were doing when they put that thing in there. They... <laughs> that that uh, item I'll, description's I'll the... real cheeky. I'll put the item description on screen. It's uh, Old Moonlight. It's very cheeky. It's like, oh, from a time before. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, and, uh, we fight Seath, we destroy Seath, and happily ever after, question mark? Destroy Seath on the moon, BT dubs. <gasps> That's the moon you're on, yeah. That's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, because um, when you fight Jean Alfred, the boss arena is ostensibly a corpse, blood-covered floor. You yeah. look really closely at it. But when you fight Seath, you're on the moon. Just crags, like the moon, you know. As mm. per usual from for some, from software, the moon is weird. And uh, one of Seath's provinces is the moons and water. Hmm. Uh, whereas Gyra is the forest. Stop me if you've heard that one before. <laughs> and the earth. So it is... The balance between yin and yang, eventually, and yin and yang being the two dragons, you can't have them imbalanced from one another. And the question arc is if you decide to go with the bad ending, because that leads to Kingsfield Additional 1 and 2. Yes. Now, in the bad ending, um, what you defeat Jean, but Seath conquers you instead. Yes. You defeat yes. Jean, and then si- Seath is like, oh, well, you're stronger. Yoink. And you don't have the strength of will through the ex-elector or your father's soul fighting at your side at the end 
or anything like that to, to keep you from getting seized. Basically, it's like the moon presence in the moon presence endings in Bloodborne. Like the moon presence oh. comes down. The moon presence yeah. comes down and like seizes you if you d- didn't eat the umbilical cords in King's Field if you didn't do everything to get the good ending of with the MLS and have your father's soul, your father's soul fight a- alongside you and in the weapon and like buff up the weapon you don't have the strength of will to keep seeth out of your head and so mm. the, the bad ending is Lyle is taken over by seeth back to square one <laughs> yeah pretty much and that leads to Kingsfield additional what is the what what's going on in those i don't i've never played those so kingsfield additional is a pair of games um i consider them as one but there is one and two they are extremely wizardry like if you've played a wizardry you know what you're seeing with the teleportation movement it's not <laughs> it's very much not the same like it is essentially a wizardry game but um in this game you're a guy from one of the neighboring villages a few years afterwards the king of that area has fallen ill and i forget whether he passed away or not and you're an adventurer and you're in this town and nothing calamitous has happened in the town yet but it is threatening to and Mm -hmm. you head into the dungeons that are nearby in between playing casino games hanging out with the the barmaid and stuff like that and you can go into the the catacombs and like you fight monsters and stuff and like the first game as you go deeper you end up with a final boss now you have to have played kingsfield additional one to get the final ending at the end of kingsfield additional two and apparently that final boss takes about 30 minutes and it turns out that used to be on a psp by the way <laughs> yeah. and um the final boss is the dragon of light and shadow the combined forms of gyra and seath because as it turns out you have to kill them both oh, yes. at the same time which is why they stay far far away from one another now let me give you a picture of what this combined form looks like because it is actually my favorite design of from software so that's the dragon of light and shadow huh and that's really beautiful you you have gyra up top and then seeth doing his best dark lurker in the middle there (laughs) oh yeah seeth is dark lurker in dark souls 2 Oh, yeah. Like, it's just so, yeah. It's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks exactly the same, except he has a hood. Yeah, yeah. I like... Okay. All right, Steve. <laughs> I see you there. I see you, Kingsfield uh, 4. I mean, 5. Yeah, but not, not Seath from Dark Souls, mind people. Seath from the end of Kingsfield 3 is yes. Dark Lurker. Yeah. Dark Lurker, yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, this, he's also this he's is also on the boss. statue of um in the what is it, the Iron Kingdom or whatever? Because maybe that was originally the hidden water uh, underground water kingdom. Uh probably But yeah. Um so A lot you, to say about fight... Dark Souls 2 in light of Kingsfield, um, but I don't that might be a different a different video. Yeah, we could do a follow-up later, if you want. But yeah, the... Uh, the So the merged creature that is... Uh, what is it called? Sagaira? Well, the merged creature is just called um, Dragon of Light and Shadow. Hikari to Kage Should no he not be... Ryu. Yeah. Should he not be called... What is it? Valad? Ah, uh, Valad. Um, no... <laughs> <laughs> now we're be, getting like, into the deep, deep we're getting cuts. into some deep lore now um one of the things that you could 
say they they kind of wrote as they went along is that a lot of the backstory Mm -hmm. if you wanted to do a big chronological thing about kingsfield you kind of have to start with 3j because most of the the backstory of like millennia ago is described in 3j rather than and then you kind of go backwards 2j 1j um Vlad is the one of the gods. There are three gods over the world. Two of them bail, and the last one, Vlad, splits himself in two because he can't manage humanity by himself. Is that right? Sort of. This gets a little bit... a bit muddied a little bit, considering okay. translation errors or translation intentional errors. <laughs> um... Or translation fixes. Maybe translation they made fixes. the lore better. <laughs> um, yeah, or something. So Vlad is one of the the main gods, and as you said, the other ones decide to pass on to go to the afterlife or whatever. These gods have created everything that you see. They're like gods of creation and stuff like that. Yeah. So Vlad is is planning to leave himself. But he decides to create babysitters for the creation. And so he created Seath and Gyra. Sort of like Adam and Eve, that they were created from God, but they're not God. Yeah. Um, to manage and babysit humanity. And then Vlad decides to like follow the other two gods. This doesn't go to plan, obviously. Seath and Gyra decide to fight one another for power over the yeah. other one. And um, they start they start warring. Now, they actually had a hot war to begin with for a long time, but they ran out of energy to do so. So they went to what we know of as the proxy war of using different, of trying to get different champions to go kill the other one and, and all of, and to grant yeah. each other the swords to go try to kill the other one. It's basically stalemated after, after their hot war, like finished up. So like, Vlad, Vlad had a, a lot to do with it, but mm-hmm. I think like there was there was a lot of heart in the right place kind of thing, but it just didn't work out because the constant tug and push of like yin and yang, which they're not so subtly re- referencing to, are in constant conflict because life is a constant conflict, and this bit of Buddhism is seeded a lot through um, other From Software games, too. You have the the orb at the end of Shadow Tower Abyss, which was like, we just wanted to live with all of our hearts, and living was an expression of conflict. Yeah. They, it... Say what you will, whether they were, like, they were correct or not about that, but they, they believed a lot of these things, these alien minds think that conflict is living is an expression of life is proof of life Mm -hmm. and so they were always constantly in contact like Seath and Gyro were constantly in contact constantly trying to one up one one another and that was kind of the status quo for a long time and then uh, we showed up and we kind of put an end to both sides Unless you count the uh, Kingsfield additional. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the final game in the series that we're talking about is Kingsfield 4. This is completely out of continuity. Like, this is just a remake of the first one completely disconnected from the originals, right? Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, in this game... There is an ancient civilization which began worshipping darkness 
and they they flooded the civilization, New Londo style, to step stop the spread of darkness. Yes. And that's then, correct. yeah, it is amazing how much like there's a you can find a lot of souls in the other Kingsfields, but there are like there are things ripped clean from Kingsfield Four in Demon Souls and in Dark Souls. Like they're like actual sound files are reused. Yes. Um You saw you I posted that on your, your server the other day. Um I yeah. forget what his Twitter Twitter handle is, but they they dug around some of the sound files and they they sound they saw that one of the beats for Dark Reality of a song that everyone apparently asks what that song is if they're like only exposed to souls and if souls creator uses that song they get inundated with comments everywhere like hey what's that song it's a that's a pretty good song turns out the the beat of that it's song. playing in the background by the way i i will have edited it to play in the background <laughs> that's that beat of that song is the same noise just pitched up an octave from the hey welcome to a new area noise in dark souls <laughs> or however that sound goes <laughs> yeah like it's the heartbeat of from software games and Tsukasa oh, yeah. Saito comes with damn furniture at this point yeah and um in Kingsfield 4 the story is that um an idol is removed from a pedestal and this idol the re removing it it sort of removes the restraint that was holding the darkness in the bottom at bay and the idol itself also seems to be cursed it travels to the surface and the world starts starts to sort of corrupt things with the weather starts getting worse things just things just get bad in the world uh, yes. An expedition of soldiers is sent into the ancient city to try to fix what's ever going on, whatever is going on, but they don't come back. And then you, uh, who are you like, you're a prince in that one too, right? Yes, it land, you are a prince, definitely. Uh, prince Dorian, I think. Yeah. You get the, you are, you like, somebody knocks at your door and hands you the statue and then you have to go and put it back into its proper place. Yes, the, um, the statue was destined to be in your hand. It will. Uh, it is. It falls into your hands, whether you try to get rid of it or not. It's very much like Echo Knight and Richard Osmond, and his dance around the red and blue stones. They are destined to always cross paths, and in this one, hmm. you are destined to have the the idol of sorrow in your hand. If you try to sell it, it comes back into your hand somehow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never tried to sell it because I I thought this must be an important quest item. I'm not I'm not getting rid of that. That's interesting. Yeah, it refuses to leave your side. Like you are destined to have it. Hmm. That is really interesting. I'm wondering then, um, the darkness which they began worshiping, is this just some darkness? Is it Necron? Is he back? I want to say it's more like the Abyss, as we understand it from Souls. Oh. Very, I want to say it's it's just sort of like the ontological nature of the Abyss and what that represents in Souls. Or even, quote, the Age of Dark Waters, unquote. And all mm. of that. It, it's sort of an ontological thing belief in a force in a in the dark forces and stuff like that um and since i've been playing it a lot there's there's a, f a healthy fear of the dark in echo night because if you aren't bathed in light you are a target of ghosts oh. so i kind of want to say that what they are worshiping in what the Forgotten Kingdom is worshipping in, in Kingsfield 4 is sort of more the ontological nature of the darkness, the abyss, uh, rather than any, like, specific power-wielding thing. I All mean, right. this is one of those games where you reach the king, 
the mythical king at the end, and he's just kind of a pitiful figure. Yeah, like in uh, uh like in Demon Souls. Yeah, very alant, very um, Vendrick. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we should maybe. Uh, I'm wondering if you want to explain this, like explain this a bit when when FromSoft talks about darkness. It's it's not exactly uh, you touched on this a bit with like the age of deep waters. It's not exactly the same as the sort of traditional Western conceptualization of like you have light, which is good, darkness, which is bad, and they're more. It's like um, the imagery, for example, of the heart of darkness resting in a pool of deep water. Like that, that it is in a pool of water is very important. Because of stagnation and because of corruption. Right. Like, um, like I mentioned earlier, Kingsfield has already established that light and darkness are two sides of the same coin and just as yeah. corrupt as one another. Um, Seath is just as corrupt as Gyra. And Gyra is just as corrupt as Seath. And, uh, too much light and darkness is just as bad as one of the other. And that, Comes to a four with and, Kingsfield four. Yeah, I was gonna say that um, another sort of twist of the knife in uh, Kingsfield is that too much of either is a bad thing, but a balance of both is also a bad thing, because they they keep humanity at war with each other. Yeah, and only when Dorian is able to return the stupid thing and defeat. The pitiful king, is he able to bring back prosperity to his own land? Yeah. Um, when when humanity is able to give its own path. From software games, a little bit, are a bit nihilistic in all of this. Not the... No. Not, no, no. You think? Not, not in the, the whole, like, wearing black eyeliner, I'm going to sit here and listen to My Bloody Valentine until I make Final Fantasy VII again levels of nihilism we were talking about humanity has to create its own path it's own make its own destiny and to mm -hmm. separate itself from the divine in a way yeah so that the so divine that's the ending has... of uh kingsville 2 yeah the, the the divine has so that the divine has no bearing over what you do humanity has to create its own path create its own ambition, apart from magic, apart from dragons, apart from the ontological form of darkness, apart from all of that, you have to create your own destiny. Yeah. And in a way, I kind of feel uplifted by that. I don't know about <laughs> you, but... Um, if, like, I, I do kind of, but then I think of... um. The way Kings, the way Dark Souls Two ends, where you can, like, you can be become, you can link the fire, you can become the air, you can like start become the Dark King, or you can just do nothing and you can just kind of walk away, but then you get Aldrich, and that's no better. Yeah, I mean, Aldrich, Aldrich forms reforms himself as a god, and that's kind of a, that's kind of a longer story, I guess, and yeah entwined with Sullivan in a lot of ways, but like the end of Dark Two with Aldia being like you wanna just say blow this pox in and create your own destiny? That that's a very Kingsfield thing. That is a very Kingsfield ending. Yeah. Like divorcing yourself from all these overlords and cre becoming creating your own destiny. I think is uh, the very Kingsfieldian ending. Yeah. And um, Kingsfield 4, we get the Moonlight Sword. It's very similar to how it was in the first game where you find a different sword and then you have to uh, perform an act, kind of like a ritual almost, in order for it to uh, be un revealed to be the Moonlight Sword. Yeah, you have to bring um, it to a tree. Yeah. Hmm. I, haven't, I haven't even... 
come into this yet but like my biggest my biggest brand is trees are freaking weird in from software games <laughs> yeah and i say weird because i can't say evil and i can't say good either they're just weird <laughs> yeah so you have uh reinhardt the third in the end of kingsfield one he looks like a tree you have uh the divi- the dragon trees in kingsfield two right yes yeah, so you have the dragon trees in kingsfield two Reinhardt in Kingsfield 1 turns into a tree. Um, there's like wandering tree enemies in Kingsfield 3. There's, there's the Reapers in Kingsfield 1, 2, and 3. Which, hmm. by the way, are oh, that's actually right. flesh monsters. In three. <laughs> <laughs> According to the manuals, they're actually flesh monsters that look like oh, trees. Just... <laughs> uh. <laughs> Someone um, forgot to check a variable, and the uh, the manual maker had to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just... reapers, man. Just saying. Um, but you have to bring it, bring the MLS as you find it in. I think the Mansion of Howling Winds. Once you find the the true ending of that failed expedition from the beginning of the game, mm-hmm. um, you bring it to. A tree and the light which is bathed in the same light as the I can't really say it's a hub because it's not you're not always coming back to it but it is kind of the hub in Kingsfield 4 with a neat mm-hmm. vi- vigil at it and um, the proto f- firekeeper maiden the yeah the water keeper because, yeah <laughs> because from software is, was at the time way more concerned with water than they were with fire at the time. Um, but the proto water keeper. <laughs> and, um, you bring it to this tree and, you know, they copy and paste that whole room and stick it in Ninja Blade because I don't know. Oh, what? <laughs> like they, they copy that whole tree room <laughs> and, uh, most of that, that cutscene. And they put it in Ninja Blade, which is a game that Ugh. released like a month before Demon Souls. <laughs> I know they took the armored spider from uh, Ninja there's Blade. There's always a there's always a spider boss. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a spider boss. <laughs> oh, that's right. The first boss in Kingsfield Four is a spider, right? Yeah, there's always, there's always a spider boss. <laughs> Well, the first boss uh, at Kingsfield 4 is uh, the control scheme, because I love how FromSoft likes to try to kill you at the very beginning of the game when you're trying to mess with the control Yeah, I was going to say, the, the first scheme. boss is that sinkhole or whatever. In, into like lava, that. yeah. If you go yeah. slightly to the right, yeah, there's lava. <laughs> See you later. Uh, they, they did the same thing in uh, Shadow Tower Abyss, where like you start walking down the stairs, and a pillar just collapses. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're too fast, you get hit by a pillar. Yeah, I love in Shadow Tower Abyss when the game starts, it's like pitch darkness, and it takes a second for your eyes to adjust. Yeah, I love it's such a small touch, but I love it so much. There's so many small touches, and then Shadow Tower ninety eight spawns you on a very thin bridge. So if you try to go left or right, you just fall right off. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, in Kingsfield four, I'm wondering, Kyra and Seath, are they at all? Like, is there anything connecting them or, like, the idea of them to the game? My argument is that the save points look like Seath. The little Cthulhu guys? Yeah, yeah. It looks like an icon of Seath in um, Kingsfield 4. But as far as I know, that's that's about it. <laughs> like, they're, like, Seath and Gyra aren't mentioned in it very much at all. But I want to say that the save points look like Seath. Um, then I'm going to say that what looks like Gyra. Looks like Gyra. The save points look like Gyra. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Well, like, look at the the picture of the dragon of of Light and shadow. You could say that the save points have three eyes, 
and are kind yeah, of like yeah, the, true. the combination. You could say that, but really, I think I think the save points kind of are kind of a wink nod towards Seath and Gyra. Hmm. Yeah, it's possible. I think Calamit was designed to look like Gyra from the end of Kingsville Two. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. Calamit essentially is Gyra. For instance, yeah. Cal- like Calamit, you meet Calamit in a forest. Hey, what is Gyra? Hmm. Gyra is the dragon of the, the black dragon of the forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal, like it. I had a long theory, and feel feel free to cut this out if this is like nuts or beyond the scope of this video. But um, I have <laughs> this. I have this long theory that. The reason why Seath became Duke and grabbed the ear of, of Gwyn mm. and had his, like, Gwyn is essentially King Harvine. And I know there was a couple of questions about Harvine, and I guess we'll get to that. But um, yeah. Gwyn is essentially King Harvine, and Seath becomes Duke and becomes indispensable to Gwyn in Gwyn's machinations. And all of this is because Seath wants to kill Gyra. I mean Calamite. Calamite <laughs> is just hanging out in his forest in Ulasil. So Just chilling. Just Illin. chilling. Just like what is seriously, what does Calamite do to the chosen and dead? He like says hi, he looks at you, pieces out. Whatever. Yeah. Like, you can just not go fight Calamite. In Artorias of the Abyss. You can, like, not go to go and have him shoot down Calamine. But the reason why all of the, almost all of the knights of, of Lord Gwyn, with the exception of Ornstein, are in Ulasil, the reason why a primordial serpent went and poked the Ulasilians into messing with stuff beyond their ken is because Seath wanted to kill Calamite. Because Calamite is Gyra. I don't think that's such a far-fetched idea. I mean, I'm known it, for far-fetched ideas. It connects idea. very, like, it's a one-to-one -one connection, I think. Pretty one-to-one. Yeah. -one. I mean, so, like, all of the Knights of Gwyn end up in... in the crosshairs of Calamite and like stuff in Ulasil goes to hell and you know but a lot of the reason why all of that happens in Ulasil to begin with isn't just because Ulasil is starting to forge their own destiny apart from Gwyn and Gwyn didn't like that but really because Seath wanted to kill Calamite hmm. So if you want to, if you like, take that Kingsfield connection forward, yes, Calamite is is Gyra. Yes, Seath did all of this so that he can kill Gyra, uh, Gyra slash Calamite. Everyone else, everything else, is just collateral damage to Seath. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like Seath. I don't think Seath doesn't feel like the kind of guy who would really care if humanity did what humanity wanted to do. Yeah. See, he see seems to be have his own ambitions, right? And I think that ambition is part and parcel of not just killing all the everlasting dragons, but killing that one in particular. <laughs> you think Calamite was like a real jock of the everlasting dragons? Like all the girls were super into him, and Seath was there, like, dude, the females—they're trying. They're just—they don't know what they want. I'm, I'm a much better. I'm much better than him. Yeah, probably. I mean. What, Seath is sitting there in his tower, like, experimenting on maidens? <laughs> Calamie's just hanging oh, around that's the true. forest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seath does have a bit of incel energy to him. Oh, boy. I mean, he, I mean, he doesn't have any scales, so he's probably grew up bullied by other dragons. Yeah. Mm, Seath, you're a water dragon. Why don't you have any scales? I think Calamite. I think Calamite didn't bully him. I think Calamite was like, "Hey guys, Seath is all right." Yeah, but probably. Seath was like, he was just so bitter, and he took it out on Calamite regardless. 
Calumet's probably like he's probably charismatic without thinking about it, not without even trying. Yeah, he's just like a good guy. <laughs> just like, and then Seath goes home and he like scowls and like crushes his hand. He's like, "I'll get you soon, Calumet." Uh. <laughs> uh, that's staying in the video, I think. <laughs> uh. So, um, I think it's Q and A time, and then we should get wrapping it up. I have right. a lot of questions. I didn't. So, just full disclosure, I copied and pasted these a few minutes before we started recording. Sounds good. I don't know if there are. I don't know if there are many. Uh, uh, how many of them are just repeats? But we'll go through it. Uh, also, I didn't copy the names. Sorry. <laughs> Hashtag professional YouTuber. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that is not my brand. <laughs> I I will half-ass this. <laughs> um, I'm curious if the old gods, the ones who created the one that made Gyra and Seath, are ever brought up in any of the games outside of Kingsville 2. They seemed interesting, but never fleshed out at all. Um... Yeah, what's the? Do we know anything about them? No, not really. Other than they, they created the world and dipped out. Um, yeah. isn't it? Didn't one create the heavens, one the earth, and one people? Yeah, Valad was earth and people, I think, and I think there oh. might have been another one for dwarves and all the rest of them, but it could have all just been Valad. Oh, <laughs> but they. Fromsoft doesn't try to do something as ontologically ambitious as as Kingsfield, at least directly until Dark Souls. Yeah. Dark Souls is ontologically ambitious for different reasons, but isn't like and this happened and this happened and this happened. It's like well, this could have happened, and then this could have happened in Dark Souls. Yeah. Another question is. Is there any lore about King Harvine? There's lots of lore about King Harvine. What's the story behind this guy? Harvine is... I know he has a flute. Right. Like, Harvine is a guy who was mentioned in 2J. But mm -hmm. most... Well, most of his stuff in 2J is about his misadventures on Melanot. And there's a lot more lore in 2J about Harvine than there is in 3J, but he does make appearances in 3J. Um, in 2J, King Harvine was one of the former kings of Verdite. Now, granted, Verdite is only called Verdite because of the magical crystal Verdite. And you get Verdite crystals and it bumps up your magical power. Uh. So, it's also a real crystal. Anyway... Um, Harvine is an old, old king from time immemorial. Think, um, the stretch of time between the Chosen and Dead and Gwyn. That's about how much time oh. separates you from Harvine. So he's, like, from a completely, completely different era. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So King Harvine is also, he's a king, so he's obviously magical power. He specialized in wind. So he mm -hmm. was the... King of Verdite, really well known, really well liked. But Melanot was right there. So Hervine decides to try to conquer the island of Melanot, not quite understanding what was going on on the island of Melanot. The island of Melanot was uh, here be dragons, don't come here. Mm -hmm. So Hervine went with his fire lord, Sedek, and one other. And they try to conquer Melanot, but Melanot would not be conquered. Like, Harvine tries to build a castle there, and it is a whole lot of folly, and colonialism and his imperialism goes to the dumpster. And eventually, Harvine has to leave the island of Melanot, basically with his army in tatters, and Sedek ends up betraying him once they get back to Verdite because the other two kingdoms like Granitiki and Igret were about to go and fight for their independence because Harvine at that point unified the three kingdoms into the northern continent because it's always a northern continent because it's a from software game. So 
So Sadek basically ends up uh, backstabbing Harvine once they get back to Verdite because Harvine is completely weakened from his failed attempt at colonialism. And mm. uh, that's essentially the end of Harvine. The other right. one who went with Sadek, I forget his name, ends up staying there and becomes, uh, I think, a dark, a dark sorcerer who is a boss in 2J. Um, one of the last bosses, I think. He was like a skeleton dark sorcerer or something. So Harvine's Folly is a story kind of told in item descriptions all over 2J. And the fact that you end up wandering around the outside of his castle and why he tries to take over the island of Melanot and how that ends up backfiring in Harvine's face is a huge long story about failed imperialism on Harvine's mm. part. And since he was a Wind like King, that. he has a whole shrine on 3J. Yeah. And a flute. And a flute, yeah. Yeah. I contribute like, it. Harvine... <laughs> Harvine is very much like the ideal the ideal image of Alant because um, oh. Alant Alant also uses a lot of wind attacks. So it's true. Harvine Alant are very similar in probably ideal, although Harvine was way more trusting than Alant ever was. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right then. Um Another question is, uh, can we talk about the enemy similarities between Kingsfield and some later FromSoft games? Snake um, Man, yeah. Snake Man, yeah. that's true. The Wada from KF4 make appearances in Dark Souls. Uh, let's see here. There's always a what? spider boss. I kind of made mention of that. There's always a spider boss. Uh, Kingsfield, Armored Core... Dark Souls, isn't Demon Souls, there's always a in, uh, boss. Isn't that a giant termite in Armored Core? Uh, no, there there, like, you can create spider mechs in Armored Core. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, there's even that, a spider think... boss in, in, in Metal Wolf Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Um, I think a lot of... So, I think... I don't know if there's that many connections, though, between, like... Oh, this is clearly an enemy that is referencing something from the uh, uh, from the Kingsfield games. Outside of like we talked about Gyra and Calamine and stuff like that. Yeah, like there's visual references, but they're completely separate lores. Yeah, like there's there's big crystal golems in Kingsfield Two and in Dark Souls, but I don't know if that's necessarily a reference or if that's just the, there are crystal areas in both. What kind of enemies do we have? Oh, big crystal guy. Well, there's. There's always the, they're separate lores, but they're similar in that with, mm -hmm. at least with the golems, the golems are attempts by the, by the other, that other archmage to create life. Mm. Um, there's, there's that like subplot about a couple of archmages wanted to create life and thus they created golems. Seath does a very similar thing with the crystal golems. Because he wanted, like, robots to go capture maidens or whatever. But, like, <laughs> there's always sort of somebody who is trying to create life out of nothing. Yeah. And that creates the golems. There's also the giants, which are completely rewritten because in the h -Tech translation. Because it might be a bit too much for the kids who were playing at the time. They were basically enslaved. And not by mm. basically, I mean they were. Um, one of the items you get from the big giant corpse in Harvine's castle, if you recall, is uh, called one thing in English, but it's actually a slave's collar in Japanese. Oh. Um, giants, were, giants have always had the short end of the stick in From Software games. And that... Not too... I think they got their well, just... Well, they, 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 they had a... They had a... They did fight <laughs> in Dark 2. Yeah, they... They managed to wreck house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, in Dark... Like, the exception is Dark 2. Uh, 
where they where they fight for themselves. But in a whole yeah. lot of other From Software games, giants seem to have the short end of the stick there. And a lot I of the giants know... are, are dead and skeletal in 2J, and they've got skeleton, like, slave collars, and then there's that one giant skeleton in 3J that is blocking mm -hmm. your way towards the end game. Oh, yeah. that's something we should note. Skeletons with swords... That is like the mascot of From Software. Always the forefront I... of from of technology from software. <laughs> yeah. Skeleton technology is from software. It's always a skeleton. Uh, it's it's yeah. funny too because I don't know if you you've seen that, but like um, when Sony asked a bunch of studios to create a, a like a graphical demo for the PlayStation Two before the PlayStation Two came out, they went to From yeah. Software, right? Yeah. Hey okay. from software, you've been you've been in bed with us you've for been loyal. You've been loyal since ninety four. You wanna do a a quick thing and have a sneak peek at what the PlayStation two can do? Yeah, sure. What does from software make? They make skeletons. <laughs> a whole lot of skeletons and fog. And the whole area looks like a specific area in the painted world of Arangamas. I don't l let me know if you need me to like drop the image in Oh, Discord I'd love to deck. see it. Uh but it's basically that one section of the painted world where in dark one you have the the dragon butt but it's kind of redone so that it's like a like a grave grave site with a bunch of skeletons so let me hmm. just drop that let me find it oh <laughs> yeah I, i've seen this in motion um somebody on reddit posted it and i'll i'll dig up the link later but yeah it's it's basically this is what they made for visual demo for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's very in character for them. <laughs> uh, I also think um, uh, Sophie told me that the Elden Ring network test begins on a beach where you fight crazy octopuses. That's very Kingsfield 2. I would not be surprised if the co-director is Yui Tanamura. And I will also <laughs> not be surprised if Nishida Shinichiro is also in the credits. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so FromSoft, FromSoft really uh, cannibalizes their own work. Right. Um, Nose to tail developer. Nothing goes to waste ever. That's true. The uh, cut Kanehurst Guardian boss, the Dragon Guardian, he's in Elden Ring. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a whole lot of that. I, I'm not surprised at all. No. <laughs> like, Godric is essentially the spider boss. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, similarities in lore between Dark Souls and Kingsfield. Um, I think we've talked a bit about that. Yeah, I think so. I think what, however close they may come, even though they are completely separate franchises, however close mm -hmm. they may come are sly winks and nods, and the fact that a lot of From Software has been there since '94. Yeah. They also they do explore a lot of these a lot of similar ideas. Yeah, they have so they have very specific ideas they like to meditate on. Yeah. Ambition um, is I'd ambition be, is the big one. Power, that's a big one. Un po what power corrupts yeah. the corruptive power? Uh, will. Yeah. Uh, what what is a proof of life? Is conflict really a proof of life? Something they keep coming back to. Yeah, I uh, I'm just I have flashbacks to Aldia talking about me, talking to me about that. Aldia is extremely fascinating, especially more now after I've played so many of these old games. Oh yeah, like he's a he's a tree. He's a guy who's a, a freaking tree head. He's basically what Reinhardt wanted to be. A head yeah. made out of a tree using fire as armor. <laughs> it's basically what Reinhardt wanted. Why does he talk to us at the end? Don't we kill him? Yeah. Does that stop Gyra? <laughs> true, true. It's only temporary. Uh, I'd be very curious to hear what made them not continue Kingsfield after Kingsfield 4. Has From Software mentioned Kingsfield at all since Demon Souls? If so, in what way? When playing Kingsfield 4, I noticed a lot of similar vibes to Dark Souls 2. 
Uh, maybe that was just me, but I'd be interested to know if the people that worked on the King's School games are still there. Technically, um, they did the additionals after Kingsfield 4, and then there's the yeah. mobile games, which are lost to time. And if any... I think the reason they haven't continued it, like, I think we don't, ha- the reason we don't have, like, Kingsfield 5 is because Kingsfield was sort of their baby, and they, like, when the time came to make uh, Kingsfield 4, they, like, put a lot of care and love into it, and then yeah. they blew up a couple of years later from Demon Souls, and just, like, why would you go back to Kingsfield when you have these more lucrative franchises? Well, there's part of that, but um, Nishida it's Shinichiro... It's also Natoshi Jin. Right, but, uh, but the first thing is Nishida Shinichiro was the mm-hmm. writer of Kingsfield 4, and mm-hmm. um, he's still at From Software. You think he has a a credit about like level design and Bloodborne. Anyway, um, no. Nishida Shinichiro has a translated by Age Tech interview, and they were very specific in saying, we wanted to make sure that the PlayStation 2 was good enough for a Kingsfield game. So yeah. there was a lot of lore, love and, and love for that. The second thing is, I think, I want to believe that uh, Demon Souls started off as Kingsfield 5. Um, and the fact that Sony went to From Software in particular for a Skyrim like is because of their history with Kingsfield. Mm-hmm. That, that's um, undeniable. They are uh, right. Yeah. So because of From Software's history with Sony with Kingsfield and Demon Souls probably starting off as a Kingsfield, that's I mean that's probably where. They started and it failed, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows what happened after that. But the other thing is, Naoto Shizin retired <laughs> yeah. from from an active role. He is on the credits of every From Software game since 1994, up until after Dark 2. Dude retires yeah. from... Yeah, he's, he's actually credited above Miyazaki on Dark 2. Um, huh. Yeah. As supervisor. Anyway, um, dude retires, I think joins the board of Katakawa, and Katakawa buys out from software at about that time, too. Um, yeah. And he basically retires. Uh, Toshifumi Nabushima was the number two under Naoto Shizen. Nabushima leaves from software at about that time. There's some whispers about that, but... I'll let that oh, stay Oh, he left whispers. because he heard he wasn't getting the promotion? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Because Nabashima was number two with From Software, up until he wasn't. The golden champion Miyazaki snatches it right from under him. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> and so Nabashima leaves to form his own studio and direct Left Alive. Anyway, um... <laughs> So Miyazaki has been has been asked about Kingsfield. Uh there's a article on Dual Shockers about it. And Miyazaki's like, no, I'm not gonna touch that. Not without not without Naoto Shizen. Yeah. That's Naoto Shizen's that's baby. baby. That's Sin's baby. I ain't touching that. So there we go. As for um, he he because he asked also or he or she also asked about similar vibes to Dark Souls two. Do you maybe want to in few a few months from now? Do you want to come back to like Dark Souls two is Kingsfield? Let's talk about that. Sure. Like, yeah. Sure. All right. Yeah, People can look forward to that. The remake of the remake of Kingsfield two is basically Dark Souls two. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's I think that's why a lot of there was a lot of backlash, just as an aside, about Dark Souls Two. Yeah, because Dark Souls Two is a Kingsfield game masquerading as a Dark Souls game, and people were expecting yeah. a Dark Souls game, which is more closer to a Shadow Tower than it is a Kingsfield. That is true. Um, th- something I love about these games is that the damage values of uh, Blunt. St- Dap and slash that they still use they like thrust or something um that's from kingsfield one from 94 they haven't changed the damage values listen this is a company that didn't understand analog sticks until 2003 (laughs) (laughs) listen 
<laughs> Do you think they're going well, to look, change their damage values that quickly? If it doesn't, if it works, look, it stays. I think I think it's very bold to say uh, they they understood the analog controls in two thousand and three. <laughs> I've played Shadow Tower Abyss. You put, you bring up the gun by pressing down on the right analog stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay, so uh if a new Kingsfield ever saw the light of day, would you like to see brought back some past games? Or and what would you like to see changed? Oh, what would you like to see brought back from past games and what would you like to see changed? I would if they did a new one, first person would be a big deal person. for me. It has to be because first person. The way you navigate in Kingsfield is very different from the way you navigate in in the Souls games, um, because the way it you sort of car, the way you car, compartmentalize three D space when you view it from a first person perspective is very different from when you have a camera and you can sort of look around more. Agreed. I um, think there's a lot more claustrophobia when you're yeah. in first person than you are yeah. in third. I also think that. Uh, well, the Moonlight Sword, I think it'd be cool to see that again. Triple um, Fang. That's my preferred oh, sword. Oh, the Triple <laughs> I love the, the Triple Fang. The best sword in Kingsfield 4. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never found that sword when I was playing. Triple Fang is usually hidden, and it's really powerful, especially if you like using your MP, because it'll, hmm. it'll MP regen. And that, oh. <laughs> that, um, that calls to mind how I end up playing Dark Souls is that like Dark Souls 3 I ended up sticking a simple gem on my my shield because I needed the MP regen even passively that's re- <laughs> that's real handy so sh- I love triple fang <laughs> uh, um I think another thing I would like to see like if they like what would you like to see brought back I want to see some, like, what creative team do you have left from the old Kingsfields that you could bring back? I don't, I don't want Miyazaki making it. Um, I don't not think because Miyazaki I don't think... to either. Yeah, but it, it, he probably could make a good one. But it's, it's kind of like, I want him to do his own thing. And this isn't really his baby. Right. And that's, that's exactly why he says he's not doing it. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's Zin's baby. I think the only person really equipped to doing that is Tanimura and Nishida. Yeah. And they're Bring still there back. at From Software, but I don't know if the will is there. Yeah. Um, I think, because they also ask, what would you like to see changed? I think, like, if if they do this, they could go VR. Like, to make the first sort of big budget triple a first person dungeon crawler in vr i think that would be interesting because a lot of the from software identity came about by them just experimenting like crazy and they uh the reason they they felt so di- like when dark souls launched it felt like such a breath of fresh air for everybody that's because from software had been sort of just marinating in their own house style for so long and they hadn't really adopted industry standards for how things should be done industry standards yeah <laughs> and i would if they if they wanted to do it i think vr could be a good way to maybe go about it and i hope and pray that drosene was that initial experimentation with vr oh. and i hope drosene didn't scare them away from vr and that they're going to come back to vr and do something in vr especially with psvr2 around the corner and i know how much from software loves messing with stuff on new new hardware. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Sony also has a few more games contracted from FromSoft, but like I don't know how their relationship is now that the uh now that Japan Studios is closed. Yeah, I don't I don't really know. Like Japan Studio was part and parcel of that to the point where I hoped that Yamagiwa would be poached by From Software. He has since announced he that was he the is... producer. Yes. Shadow director yeah. from Japan Studio for Bloodborne and Durasne. Dude loves oh. Bloodborne and Durasne. He was technically the executive producer, but basically he's Japan Studio's director for those games. Um, hmm. I had hoped that From Software would have would have poached him, but he has announced that he has joined Team Ninja. 
Um, also good. Also, also pretty good because Neo is a pretty good game. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he he comes up with next. Um, they did poach to Katao from Japan Studio, but I have no idea what that relationship is either, because the relationship is going through X Dev Worldwide. Mm-hmm. Instead of like a specific regional studio for Sony, I have no idea how that's that's working out. Yeah. Uh, another question is, uh, uh, I would love to hear you discuss the transition from first person in Kingsfield and Shadow Tower to third person in Evergrace and Demon Souls. Uh, I haven't played Evergrace, so I, I can't say. Is shout out it, is to, it a good shout out to throwaway zero three four five I think on on Reddit because uh, I know she's a huge Evergrace fan. <laughs> um, I know that. So we touched on this a bit earlier. Uh, Miyazaki explained that when he was brought into Demon Souls, it it was basically he believed that uh, Sony had commissioned a game to be made to compete with Oblivion. That was playable in first and third person. Right. And I'm um, sure that's why they went to From Software, because From Software basically specialized in first person Kingsfield games. Up until yeah. that point. So uh what's the uh how how what how good is the third person in uh Evergrace? Um it's it's A, a bit of context here is that From Software released two games with the Japanese PlayStation 2. They released okay. a third when it released in America about nine months later. So there's three games that launched with the PlayStation 2 in America from From Software. Evergrace is one of these, and it shows that it's oh. one of these. It's... um. It's a story about a brother and a sister, but you you basically play both of them on concurrently on concurrent adventures. And All right. It's very simplistic. It's uh it shows that it might be their first attempt at a PlayStation 2 game. Like it's a cool little story, but it definitely shows um like Eternal Ring is way more polished than Evergrace is. However, yeah. Evergrace did well enough that it got a sequel um, and a novelization, which I think uh, the person I just shouted out finished translating of. Oh, nice. So, like, it's not my favorite game, but I know people absolutely love that game. And it is chock full of the Kota Hoshino experience of music. So it's not all bad. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but it's definitely it's definitely not terrible. Um, the American cover does suffer from the fact that they kind of tried erasing that one of the main characters is a girl. So there. <laughs> so like I said, it, you play a brother and a sister doing concurrent adventures, but the American yeah. the American cover art only shows Darius. Oh, like straight up <laughs> only shows Darius doesn't even mention Charlene, but uh, it was the first game from software did. I think that did two separate concurrent campaigns, which I think they will, they, they perfected a bit with Kuan. Hmm. All right. Um, Another question. Uh, was there an installment where you use the game maps religiously? Er. I, use, I use the game maps. I have a strange ability with, like, direction, so I don't super yeah. get lost. But, like, looking at the game maps <laughs> in Kingsfield is an experience. For I joke that from software doesn't put maps in Dark Souls, not because they didn't want maps in Dark Souls, it's because they are terrible at maps. The because... maps in the Kingsfield games, they look like pieces of garbage. 
They are so bad. <laughs> they, they, like, when I was streaming Kingsfield 2J, one of my, mm-hmm. one of my, um, viewers asked, how the heck am I able to read that map? It looks like a motherboard. It's just yeah. flat, it looks like a flat line art. And, and there's no, there's no there's marker no, like, for where you are. Marks. Yeah, nope. there, it's just a, a flat line. It looks like a motherboard. Doesn't even mark where you are. You're just gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> and it you're, you have be... to wonder, like, w- w- I'm trying to go into this room, and I know it's a square room. Okay, so I just need to look at a square on the map. They're all squares. They're all rooms. squares. <laughs> They're all squares. <laughs> uh uh, the map in Kingsfield 4 looks a bit more uh, in-depth, but I didn't find it, so... Oh, yeah, there's two different maps in Kingsfield 4. Um, there's oh. the the normal map, which is useless, and the King's map, which you get towards the end of the game, which reveals all the all the hidden rooms and stuff like that. But the King's map is in 3D. Yeah. It's also useless, but for different reasons. Oh. <laughs> uh. So... Like, from software, aren't, aren't very good at maps. I use them. I have a strange ability with direction, and I don't really get lost. And I don't get lost in the in the chalice dungeons either. But I did use them. But the maps by fans are probably better than the maps in game. Oh, uh, definitely, almost certain. Like, I don't think how they. I I don't see how they could be worse. <laughs> no, no. Uh, like the maps are. I'm sure. I'm sure Acer has put a couple of images of some of these maps on the screen already. But oh man, I am not overselling this. This these are these are <laughs> bad maps. <laughs> uh, um, how would you feel about a blue point style remake of any of the Kingsfields? Uh, also, should From let a third party handle the Kingsfield IP? No on the second. Hard no on the second. Uh, yeah. Um, but They won't even handle it without point, Naoto she's in. Yeah. Like, this is this is a very... I, like, it's, it's kind of hard maybe for people to understand because we're kind of browbeaten by, like, companies like Activision. From Software seems to actually have a lot of respect for the franchises that they have. And they don't they don't just want to shit out another Kingsfield because they think it will sell. Yep. Um but for the Blue Point style remake, I I I see I'm 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 like fifty fifty because on one hand, I think if you do that, that's a really good way of getting more people in. But for Blue I think Blue Point specifically, they kinda dropped the ball on Demon Souls with so many changes that just didn't make any sense and a lot of the contextual narrative was sort of stripped out i know it was you who was pretty uh you you got upset that they changed the water imagery into fire yeah yeah like uh it blue point seems to have misunderstood what they were going for in demons demons is a game about water because every from software game up to that point where it was about water and mm-hmm. the souls are water imagery. And that's why when you fight Tower Knight and Delant, who are, by the way, wreathed in fog because they are burning souls, because souls are water, spray out jets of water, especially Tower Knight, from his ankles mm-hmm. because it's water. And that's why the fog is a, is a thing in Demons because it's all burnt up souls. Yeah, it's also... um. In the Valley of Defilement, it's in uh, the final arena on the beach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it's I, a game about I water. I guess... Like, that's, yeah, that's the see, big thing. I mean, there are some offensive things about the Blue Point remake. See also Satsuki. <laughs> Satsuki. <laughs> you mean Fu Manchu? God, Satsuki. Like... I'm surprised no one took Blue Point to task for how offensive it is. <laughs> like, they turned him into a minstrel. <laughs> they gave him minstrel face. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Satsuki uh, looked 
normal in the in the PS3 original. He had yeah. he, he just had silver hair because he was an edge lord, but like they turned him into like a minstrel looking figure, and it's offensive. If you put if you put like longer fingernails on him, he's like an offensive 18th century. Beware the Chinaman. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of poster. Like, how did Blue Point skirt around that other than the fact that nobody had PS5s at the time? <laughs> like, the, people were talking about, people were talking, I think, I think Waypoint were talking about um, the fat officials looking grotesque in the Blue Point one, which is not exactly yeah. how they were supposed to look like in the PS3. Which seems a bit ph- uh, phobic about the fat officials, like yeah. Um, it's oh, also oh boy, uh, Satsuki. Yeah, it's also a big difference. Is um, Miyazaki was once asked about uh, visuals in his game, and he explained that he doesn't like grotesque visuals. Like the um, the example he gave was that the undead dragon in Dark Souls. The original concept art he got saw like a dragon covered in maggots, and he expl- he 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 asked the designer to instead focus on the sort of tragedy of this beautiful majestic creature being like succumbing to such a sh- disheveled form, and that's that's also in Demon Souls. Like this, it isn't really that grotesque. It just it evokes the grotesque more than being explicit about it. Yeah, the fat um, officials are supposed to be a lot's madness, not a grotesquery of that madness. Yeah, not like zit covered, just these sort of yeah. Um. So, but at the same time, I I'm not entirely against just doing the Kingsfields again in some capacity. Uh, yeah, I'm not like, against it. I'm I'm mixed about it. I am yeah. mixed about my feelings with Demon Souls because really the only the only way on modern systems you can play PS3 Demon Souls is to like figure out a way on the Japanese PS Now and pay thirty dollars for thirty days, which is apparently yeah. really difficult because of the rating system in Japan and needing needing a credit card for specific ratings because blah 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 and get good luck getting a Japanese credit card blah. blah. So like I'm I'm glad people can play it, but it's it's not like medieval should have been the standard for how remakes are done. You you have yeah. the medieval remake was pretty good, and I understand that licensure is a is a deep dark hell, and they probably didn't want to pay Sega or Bandai Namco to re-release PS3 Demon Souls so they just did a new version. So I I understand that licensure is a hell but it should have been a bit more faithful and I think Blue Point should have done a little bit more research into pre-Dark Souls than quote watching as many YouTube videos as possible of people who probably also didn't play Kingsfield. <laughs> They should have come to us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, no, I'm right uh, here, Blue Point. You want to write me a check? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Let's do it. Uh, well, this this question kind of connects to that. Why doesn't FromSoft bother to port these games to modern platforms? I think once well, uh, yeah, From Software is done. They're just kind of done. They don't port anything themselves to modern systems. Metal yeah, Wolf Chaos true. was done because Devolver saw the like the hype around it around uh super best friends and they're like hey you want to can we do this and from software's like yeah sure <laughs> just as long as we don't have to do it <laughs> <laughs> so you know devolver got digital uh, general arcade to do it, the port and from software only l- loaned out a couple of the guys at like on speed dial in case they had any questions from software doesn't do their own ports dark souls remastered was done by a polish company qlock um metal of chaos like i just said was done by a company in japan called general arcade um porting porting is just not what from software does when they're done with the game they're done the only yeah. time from software re-released kingsfield was for the the dark side box um in like 2006 they re-released every from software game plus all of the the osts into a very large box and from software is able to do that because they self-publish in japan this thing is huge oh it's rare now 
and it's gorgeous, but it's very rare. Um, but they don't port themselves. Like no. when from so Soft- when they, uh... it seems like when from like because from software's staggered release schedule is like when they're about to release a game, they're like midway through a different game, and then they're starting a third game. So I think that's like everybody. Yeah, they don't have the resources to spare. They don't. They don't really. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is when the uh, PC release of Bloodborne happens, it'll be because of a different studio? Yeah, it'll be a different studio. And Japan studio is <laughs> gone, so I don't... I, I, I don't see it happening. Uh-oh. Like, unless I Nixes, who, for, like, Sony just bought, who specialize in PC ports, unless Nixes is, ab- is able to, like, pull some magic, From Software's not doing it themselves. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, hey, uh, Sinclair asks us, uh, why is it called Kingsfield? Actually, this is a good question. I know it's a joke question, Sinclair wrote, but it's actually, <laughs> joke's on her, it's a good question. Field is this is analogous to world for from software nomenclature. So uh-huh. it's, if you, th- this comes into play with all of the Elden Ring stuff, because Miyazaki calls it open field games, not an open world games. In oh. Demon Souls, they're not called worlds in the Japanese manual. They are called fields. They are fields. Is it called field tendency? Yeah. Like, really? the Japanese manual is, they call all of the worlds fields. It's fields. Fields, fields, fields. Every hmm. level is a field. It's King's Field because it's actually King's World is how like a Westerner would call it. Like Metroidvanias are called Metroidvanias in the West, but in Japan they're called search action games. Oh. Like for from software nomenclature, field is the very same as a world. So it, it could you could read it as King's World. Open field games, open same. world games. Demon Souls is fields. Like, yeah, that is why it's called King's Field, <laughs> because from software nomenclature has to be special snowflakes and called the same their their environments as fields, not worlds. Take that, Sin. Try to derail <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> Joke's on you, Sin. That's a good question. Uh, and the final question um with how FromSoft makes its games, the natural response is to find things that continue across multiple games. I'd be interested in seeing what is unique to this series that really doesn't show up anywhere else in FromSoft's stuff. I think the, I think this is a very, uh, I think it's the most sort of, what's the word, traditional fantasy story. Yeah, um, it's very traditional. And it's very like they don't do interconnected stories like this no no like, really. like not even um, not even armored court does an interconnected story like this it'll be like the first generation and then the second generation happens like 300 years later and then the yeah. third generation like, happens oh, like another hundred years no you're playing john alfred armored you're court. playing his best friend and then you're playing john alfred's son in that order and then you're playing some totally different guy from another universe don't think too hard about it don't don't worry <laughs> about it shut up though no shut up though <laughs> Uh, yeah, I also think that, um, it, this is not going to sound kind of crazy, but I think the, I, I think the level of hand holding was never as little as it is here, which, which sounds kind of crazy because like FromSoft is kind of known as the company that makes the difficult games, but like I implore people actually play these games and then tell me that Dark Souls is difficult. Yeah, there's. I think part of it is that they were just kind of learning as they were going along, so they didn't have a refined knowledge of player psychology. And people take this for mm-hmm. granted now, but like all the big companies, ATVI, EA, they employ psychologists to understand the player's mind. People forget this happens, but there is. There is a lot of psychology that goes on to see, to like outthink a player in these bigger companies to understand how to like 
get more money out of them for MTXs or to see how they would take on a game to see where the, the, the rough points are so that you can smooth over the rough points. There's a lot of mm. like psychology going on in these, these games. I think I want to say Quaylog does that now for Microsoft and um, from software doesn't do that back in the nineties. This was not a thing. They were struggling to figure out how programming works. Like, <laughs> like Kingsfield four cuts corners on math because the PlayStation 2 allowed it to. If you put Kingsfield 4 in a PS2 compatible PlayStation 3, there is a place where you will break the game. And this is the grand lance this is the grand lance moment. Um there is a knight the that is drawing a map on the floor. Mm-hmm. And he is in a place such a way that it unloads the back area and starts to load the front of the other area so that you can look out his windows and see down to the next area, right? All right. So when I have... This is documented on my stream because we did it for science. But when you talk to him and you get his stuff and you hear about that and you see him drawing his map with his grand lance on the floor and then you leave, then you try leaving. What happens is the game forgets where you are because the math is, is they cut corners in the math. And the PS3 is actually a lot more strict on the math than the PS2 ever was, especially even in official emulation. So the PS3 forgets where you are and doesn't realize it needs to reload the map that just unloaded so that you can look, you can talk to the Grand Lance Knight. The game breaks. <laughs> This is the same in emulation until maybe 2015 when some hero fixed it with a patch. (laughs) Like, from software, we're basically learning how to program with every every game. They just, you know, they're as polished and, and as knowledgeable as they are now because they did a lot of mistakes back in the 90s, a lot of experimentation. And they learned as they were as they did for a lot of it. Very strange company. I love them so much. <laughs> yeah. All right, then that's that. This was the uh, ultimate Kingsfield conversation. Oh, hopefully it was. What do you say? Do you want to pluck something? Uh, I don't have a SoundCloud, so I don't have that. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, on Twitter, C- yeah, but C slash Casative is my YouTube channel. I have a Twitter at Angel No Moon. I have a Twitch at Theomini. Um hmm. Yeah, I like how there's no. I like how you don't use the same username twice. No, it's like it's really weird because like uh, I've had my YouTube channel since 2011, right? But yeah. I wanted. I have three different Google accounts. But Sony, my PlayStation 4, did not want to attach itself to my Theomini account at, at from Google. So cool. I was like, whatever. <laughs> and I've had my Twitter account since, a little bit since after it opened. So, like, none of these were made with a brand in mind. <laughs> no, but you can change the name on Twitter. No, I can't, because all my names are taken. <laughs> Mess up on the else. <laughs> no, I cannot. My names are taken by other people. So uh Ah oh, yes. From from the new from the Newport Theomenes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's like uh, that's like a I, great I joke, can't uh... like I uh, so I'm like I just have to deal with it. It just it's just a funny story. Uh, no. <laughs> I was quoting uh I don't know if you've seen uh the Frasier episode with that joke. I love that. Oh, man. I, it's been so long since I've seen a Frasier episode. It was when, uh, what, Johnny Chainsaw moved in on top of him. And Daphne explained to Frasier, oh, he's, his name is Johnny Chainsaw. And Frasier was like, mm, Chainsaw. From the Newport Chainsaws? Anyway, oh, so my mad. gosh. <laughs> I love Frasier. Yeah, so, like, my, my brands, I don't... I didn't make any of my social media with a brand in mind. 
Nah. And so it's it's very confusing <laughs> afterwards. For that, I'm sorry. Uh, For that, I've tried. But it, it just didn't work out that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should really, uh, you should have like a, a link you send people to where you like explain this. So whenever some jackass like me asks you or points this out to you, you can just, here's the link. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's here's the link. Hello, my uh, name is all of these names. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also have your uh, Discord server linked in the description. So uh, I hope people enjoyed this. We'll be back one day to do our talk on Dark Souls 2 as Kingsfield 5. And I hope everybody sticks around until then. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, and I forgot my Medium account where all my actual essays are. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can put that in now if you want. Right. I'll just edit it. And I have a Medium account over at uh, theomini.medium.com. That's where all my actual essays are. If you want to sit there for about half an hour reading my entire takedown of the first sin with... Uh, about Kingsfield. The first Natoshi Zin? <laughs> That's a secret bit of lore for people who stuck around. Yeah, secret bit Bye -bye. of lore. Bye-bye.